Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Today's video is going to be a book review of this book here. This is Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto and this was first published in 1987. Now this book is made up of two novellas. The first one is Kitchen and the second one is Moonlight Shadow. So I'm going to review them separately because they don't interlink in any kind of way. So Kitchen first up is about this girl, she's kind of early 20s, she's in Japan and she's lost her parents tragically and she lives with her grandma and she doesn't have any other family, she doesn't have anyone else and then her grandma dies and she is completely alone within the world. Then this boy who's the same age as her who knew her grandma says why don't you come and live with me and my mum and it starts like she's hanging out with them and then she goes to live with them and she realises that the boy's mum isn't actually his mum. It is his father who is a transsexual so dresses up as a woman and lives as a woman, works in a gay bar but is actually technically a man and has raised the boy like a mother. So she's living with them, she really fits into their family and then tragedy strikes again and it's about how they really deal with it but it's really about a main character dealing with the grief of her grandma and the loss of that but then also realising that the world still goes on, it still continues and she wants to work as a chef and there's so much imagery within food and how food can bring people such comfort in their times of need. Oh god I loved Kitchen, like honestly adored absolutely adored and it's really about the intricacies of bereavement and that bereavement is a really difficult thing and we all deal with it differently but the world does still go on and even though it's about sadness and devastation and everything it's got so much like hope and light within it as well and it's like you may be alone but there's a difference between being lonely you might be by yourself but it doesn't mean that you're lonely in the world that you can meet other people and have the comfort yourself and food and different stuff loved kitchen now let's get on to Moonlight Shadow, which is the second story. So this is about, again, another young woman growing up in Tokyo and her boyfriend has died. And her boyfriend's brother, his girlfriend, was in the car with her boyfriend when he died. It was a terrible car accident. So then she's meeting up with her boyfriend who's died's brother. And obviously he lost his brother and his girlfriend in this car accident. And they're talking about it. And the woman in that story, she's running to kind of get away from her problems. So she runs every day. She's gotten very thin. She's just trying to not think about the devastation. She thought she'd be with this man for the rest of her life. Loved him with all her heart and her soul. And he has died. And it's just great tragedy. And then she's meeting up with his brother who is wearing an item of clothing that his girlfriend used to wear is like to remind himself of her. And he's completely like trapped in the past like her. And then, she's standing by a river, she's done her run, she's standing by a river, and this mysterious odd woman just turns up and is like, starts talking to her, and it's a little bit odd and bizarre, and she's like, okay, gotta go, bye. That w woman was very weird and like over-friendly with her, and then she can't stop thinking about this woman, and she's like, there's something about her, but I can't work out what. And then it gets into the realm of magical realism. Now, magical realism, I would say, is in both stories, but so subtle. Like, it's not like she's by the river, she turns around, oh my god, there's a woman with a head with a pumpkin, like, welcome to the spirit world. Like, it's not like that. It's done in such a beautiful way. It's just stunningly kind of soaked into the story, and it's all to do with, like, she's got a connection with this river. And it's just beautiful like both stories I loved and I'd finished Kitchen and then I started reading the second story and was like oh, I'm not gonna love it as much as Kitchen because I love Kitchen loved them both like honestly the bereavement everything about it was beautiful and it also I felt like the beginning of both stories the women were alone and lonely and then by the end of them they were still alone their loved ones hadn't come back they were still alone but they were no longer lonely they'd reached some kind of you know, going forward. I mean, I love also that it's not like, oh, someone's died in your life, forget about them, move on. Oh, by the end of it, like, they're, you know, dancing up the street, tap dancing up the stairs. Like, it wasn't like that. It was just done in such, oh, such a warm, beautiful, stunning way. I was actually reading this on the train and, like, tears were forming in my eyes. I had to stop myself from crying. It was so stunning. I loved it. I loved the magical like realism elements and I'm not a massive magical realism fan let me tell you that right now but I really loved how it was just seamless within the situation gorgeous and the use of like food to connect with people so in kitchen there's a bit where a boy who she really likes he has a great tragedy happen to him and she knows about this tragedy because she's been through it herself and he's like oh you know we're both hungry good night and she 
kind of feels, and there's this foreshadowing that maybe he's going to hurt himself, that he's going to kill himself, that he's going to, you know, do something. And so she gets his food and she takes it to him and he's far away from her and it's just so lovely. But then before she gives him the food, she's trying to like clamber up to this roof to give it to him and she gets like mangled and she's bleeding. <laughs> and so it's not like an actual fairy tale, it's like a realistic fairy tale. And there's a bit when she's like clambering on the roof and she's laying on her back and she's thinking, how did I get here? Like I'm bringing him this food to make him feel better and I'm just laying in my own blood. But then it's like beautiful because it's real. Oh, just loved it. Like I feel like I could go on and on. The writing, don't. She writes so, beautifully and she writes so poignantly just everything was so deliberate and gorgeous throughout it I loved it stunning book I just adored it like there's not much else I can say about it I adored it I loved also how it dealt with like when someone's dead that's it that's the end the like finality of that and how that can leave you so cold and in kitchen obviously her grandma dies and she's thinking back I must have thought at a time that my grandma was aging and she was getting older and that she was eventually going to die but it's it compares nothing to the thought of someone dying to someone actually dying are two completely different things honestly I could talk about it all day <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I just, one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. I cannot recommend it enough. It is so good. I'm gonna read so much more from this author as well because I know she's written loads of other books. Oh, don't. If you've read anything else from this author, tell me what books of hers that you liked. Comment them down below and I'll read those ones. Just stunning. And that's it. That's the end of this video. I'll see you again soon for another one.